Today I'm going to take you through Carnival Imagination as we go deck by deck, bow to stern, in this full ship tour. It's Cruise Fever here bringing you this video today of Carnival Imagination, a 70,000 ton vessel. There are seven other fantasy class ships. These are the oldest ships in Carnival's fleet, but this ship was recently renovated in 2016. A guy's burger joint was added, Blue Iguana Cantina, waterworks, and uh, several other things we're going to take a look at today. Here you see some images of Long Beach cruise port. We have Queen Mary there in the background. I, I recommend at least checking it out, if not staying on the ship prior to going on your cruise. A lot of history. It's just a really great experience. Here's inside the Long Beach cruise port, that big dome there. And here we have just an exterior shot of Carnival Imagination. It holds 2,000 passengers, about 900 crew. It's 855 feet long. There are 10 passenger decks. This was a three-day cruise out of Long Beach to Ensenada, Baja, California, Mexico. Let you see the background there. We're going to start off looking at the top decks and work our way down, take a look at the pool deck, and then we'll look at some of the interior parts of the ship. This is the sun deck, deck number 14. Offers great views over the pool deck, and it's usually a lot quieter up here if you want to find a lounger to kind of catch some sun. This cruise was in, in January. Uh, so it was a little bit chilly, as you can tell by not many people being in the pool. And there is a jogging track that goes around deck number 14 as well, as you see here. If you keep walking forward, you will see the mini golf course, nicely renovated. There's some seating around it and some picnic tables. And if you keep going forward from the mini golf course, you see these great views out over the bow of the ship. There's not a lot of space, as you see in that narrow walkway there. But it's usually pretty quiet. It's a great place to watch uh, sail away or, or see the ship pull into port. Now we're going to go down one deck to deck number 12. Remember, there is no deck number 13. And this is aft of the ship. And we see here the water slide, twister, and we see waterworks and some of the, uh, the results of the renovation that took place in 2016. So here's the 300 foot water slide, 300 feet long. And there's also uh, a couple sets of racing water slides, a larger one for the bigger kids and a smaller one for the little kids that you'll see as well. There's a little bit of a splash zone for the kids. And on these fantasy class ships, there's just a lot of room on the sports deck back here behind the waterworks area. See all these loungers and just a lot of deck space. Good place to kind of watch uh, sail away as well from the back of the ship. And if you look down in this part of the ship, you'll see Serenity, which we'll take a look at a little bit closer in just a minute. This is the adult-only Serenity Lounge. This little time-lapse will give you kind of a brief overview of a quick walkthrough of the pool deck and the veranda deck as well. See the shuffleboard court there and some loungers just above the pool deck, which we'll look at here as I walk down. You'll see the lifeboats on either side of the ship kind of block some of the views. There's always been some part of the complaint of fantasy class ships, but uh, here's the main pool, the resort style pool, it has a little divider in the middle, and we'll look at that in more detail a little bit later as well. So we see here the veranda deck with all those loungers around, uh, just above the pool deck, and the stage area in the middle. There's a ping pong table on one side of veranda deck, and there's a smoker's area on the other side that's covered. You see the chess mat just above the stage. And that's the smoker's lounge, or smoker's area, one of the lounge. <laughs> that's some nice comfortable seating on veranda deck as well, just above the main pool. So now we're going to take a look at the resort style pool. Like I said, on this cruise there was not a lot of activity in it because it was a little bit cold. But here's some nice seating around it, some stools and umbrellas for shade. And you have those spiral staircases on either side. So here's some of the new additions, the Blue Iguana and the uh, Red Frog Rum Bar on either side of the main pool. And this stage in the center of the pool deck is where a lot of the, um, the live music took place. There were some activities, the men's hairy chest competition. You see the cornhole boards here as well. Now we're going to jump back up one deck to deck number 12 and go forward so we can check out the spa. Here's the massage area, the relaxation room where you will wait before or after your massage. You can get some nice lemon infused water there. And we're going to take a look at several of the treatment rooms 
that are part of the spa. So this is the men's locker room. There's a uh, ladies locker room on the opposite side and to get to the gym, or the fitness center, you have to walk through this area. So here's some showers and sink and everything. And right before you get to the gym, you have a sauna and you have a steam room as well. So same for the men and ladies on the opposite sides and this is free to use. The steam room for some reason on this particular cruise never got really hot. Maybe I just went during the wrong times. It wasn't working right, but the dry sauna was about 150 degrees, felt really nice. So we keep walking uh, forward here and we see a really nice gym for, uh, for a ship this size. Uh, the equipment was really nice and it was a little bit crowded on sea days, but um, really offered a lot of nice treadmills and machines. And you saw the free weights there earlier. And here's the fitness studio where they have spin classes and yoga and stretching and all kinds of uh, different classes that you can take in this room. And after you walk out of the spa, you'll see the grand atrium. So I want to show a few shots of that so you can see what it looks like. On the bottom there is deck number seven. And there are a few doors off of some of these upper decks to go out to the Lido deck directly uh, from here and, and even to the sun deck. So this is on the Lido deck again, right next, right near the, the main pool area and the stage. A very welcome new addition, guys, burger joint, some of the best burgers at sea. And during the breakfast hours, you have this nice omelet station there at Guys. And Blue Iguana Cantina, where you can get your burritos and tacos. And in the morning, they do have breakfast burritos there as well. And in between Blue Iguana and Guys Burgers, there's a nice drink station. Oh right, the salsa bar there for the Blue Iguana, got ahead of myself. Here's a drink station there where you can get your coffee. They even had a hot chocolate uh, machine there. You can get your juice and water and uh, put some creamer and some sugar in your coffee if you'd like. And this is just well placed uh, right between those two restaurants. Nice hand washing station before you walk into the buffet area. Horizon Bar and Grill is the name of the buffet on Carnival Imagination. You can see the neat decor here with the blue circles and the lights throughout the ceiling. There is an ice cream machine for 24-7 ice cream or frozen yogurt. And so I just want to show some of the different food stations that are offered around the buffet. Never felt that crowded. One nice thing about adding Guy's Burger Joint and Blue Iguana Cantina is that it lessens the crowd in the main buffet area, kind of thins it out a little bit. But I really enjoyed the salad bar, some nice fresh Caesar salads that I got about every day. There was a deli station back there. And uh, we're going to take a look at the, right, the sweet spot station where um, I like to frequent some good cookies and cakes and pies. And there is a pizza station in the back right corner from where this is being shot here. This is the deli. Where you can have a sandwich made, some really good fresh sandwiches. And here's Pizza Pirate. You can see the different kinds of pizza that you can order from here 24-7. Uh, they do a really good job. Sometimes there's a little bit of a wait if there's five or six people in line because they kind of make it to order. And here in the back uh, left section of the buffet, you have these couple TVs. This is kind of a sports bar area. They show a lot of the NBA and NFL games back here. And if you keep walking back, you see a nice alfresco dining area where you can eat outside. It's always a lot quieter. And on the side of the ship, they have more seating as well. And you see the kind of a netting they have to keep the seagulls away. And it did a great job. I didn't see any seagulls or any aerial wildlife landing on the ship. And from just outside the buffet, if you go up these stairs, there's just one set of stairs on one side of the ship. It's an easy way to go from the buffet right to the Lido deck. So I just wanted to show you that little stairway there. And if you're on Lido deck and you start walking forward, and then you see this one uh, flight of stairs to go up, you have Another great place to watch over the, the bow of the ship and watch these great views. I, I hardly ever saw people up here. There are some balconies right there, so keep that in mind. If you do book a balcony there, you might have a few people walking by. We're now on deck number nine, aft where we have the Serenity Adult Only Area. 
There is a hot tub on either side of this area, and you see the nice padded loungers in the middle there and some shade under the umbrellas. This is right below the outside eating for the buffet, but noise didn't seem to be an issue because it was always pretty quiet up there. And if we keep going forward on the same deck, just outside of the Serenity area is Xanadu Lounge. This is where the uh, Sousa Palooza parade began and also the comedians, the punchliner comedy would take place in this lounge. We continue to walk forward and there you will see the Alchemy Bar just outside of the Xanadu Lounge. So if we keep walking forward from there, you'll see the Imagination Promenade, but I wanted to show you this from the pool deck. You can, there's a stairwell kind of right in the middle of the pool deck, and you could take the staircase that goes right down to the promenade area, or you can go from here right back up to the pool deck if you want. So I just wanted to point that out. So here is the Imagination Promenade. A lot of activity takes place here, especially at night, uh, between and, and after dinners. This is where the photographers will be set up to take your picture. All the little stations. Here's the $10 boutique and a couple little shops along the way. Some $10 items in there. And if we keep walking forward, we see the Illusions nightclub. This is also where one of the muster stations will take place. So just make sure you look at your, your card to see where your muster station will take place. Still walking forward on the promenade, you'll see Vittorio's Cafe, a place to get a specialty coffee or a mocha or even a milkshake, and they have all these desserts as well. This was a popular place on the cruise because there's these two large TVs that also showed the NFL playoffs. So you see this; these seats were all packed full of people watching the games. So they don't really have a sports bar except for the one at the, uh, in the buffet area and this area here, and they also showed the games in Shangri-La Lounge, which was where my muster station was and you will see two TVs on either side. So this place was also packed with people just watching the game. So I don't know if they do this for every big game, but they did on this cruise, which was kind of neat. And this is also where some of the karaoke took place. So still walking down the promenade, you see this is where some of the live music took place at night. Just across from that is a bar, and that is right next to the cherry on top, where you can get some candy or flowers, um, mainly candy. There's a lot of really good candy there. As you can see here in this shot, this is another addition from the 2016 renovation. And now we'll take a look at the El Dorado Casino. So if you got some money to burn, you want to help the cruise line out a little bit, make a little donation, this is where you can make it all happen. You can also buy some sushi right there off the promenade. Uh, there's an extra cost for this, but this is uh, right outside that area where the casino just was. And we have an arcade as well, not real huge, but a nice little arcade with some new machines in there and a nice air hockey table. I don't have any footage of it, but just across from the arcade is the photo gallery where you can buy your pictures, your 8x10s, or whatever size and uh, that's right near the atrium as well. We'll keep walking forward to see Dynasty Lounge. This is the main theater on Carnival Imagination. Some really nice decor. I like the lower area, the seating. Uh, you have plenty of leg room. You can sit in the middle of a row without having to stumble over somebody. That's Hasbro, the game show going on in this clip here. It's always a lot of fun for the whole family to get involved. The two shows that took place during my three-day cruise were Epic Rock and Divas. From the balcony, if you're in the way back, it's kind of hard to see. You'd have to be in one of the front sections of the balcony and you have a decent view. But here's some of the rounded couches. And the uh, Sousa Palooza story time took place in the theater as well. On deck eight, just outside of the theater, are the Carnival Fun Shops. Here you have the cologne and the jewelry there. And then you have uh, some of the purses and clothing, apparel, and knickknacks and trinkets that you can bring home to your family and friends. 
I don't have any interior shots of Circle C, but that's for ages 12 to 14, right outside the atrium. Mirage Bar is the piano bar, also right outside of the atrium. Got these really neat yellow and purple globes, uh, the decor there. And right across from Mirage Bar is Curiosity Library, a really nicely laid out library with some games and books as well. A nice seating area as you see here with some great views out over the ocean. We're in the middle of Deck 8 right now. We're going to check out Pride Dining Room. This is where you'll go if you have your time dining on your Carnival Cruise. And this is from 5.45 to 9.30 p.m. And Spirit Dining Room has a similar look and feel. This is towards the back of the ship on deck number eight. And this is where you will go for either the early dining or your late dining option. Here we are on deck number seven at the bottom of the atrium where you have the shore excursions desk and the guest services desk as well. There's also live music that takes place here. A really good guitar player uh, during the day and, and at night. There's an ATM machine here at deck number seven. There's also one in the casino. Uh, there's also an internet cafe in the atrium that I didn't show. And right off of the atrium is this art gallery and it takes you to a set of stairs and elevators on the opposite side. just want to show you what the elevators look like. Really nice golden decor with some tile between and we're going to take a look at one of the hallways, nice wide hallways for a cruise ship, I thought. And we're going to give you a tour of the room I stayed in, M155, M is for main deck. This is on deck number five. This is an ocean view cabin. I found it to be a really decent sized cabin. Uh, lots of room there, especially for an older ship. You see the bunk bed on the right that can fold down if you have more guests. And a really large mirror there uh, in the, the main part of the room. Bathroom's a little tight, a little small, and you got the, the shower curtain there. Um, I'll show the floor here in a minute. It's a nice, grippy floor. It kind of has this blue rubber and uh, offered you know a lot of slip resistance. There's an outlet right above the mirror in the bathroom if you want to plug in an electric shaver. Uh, not a hair dryer. You don't bring one of those. There is one in the room here in the, the drawer. There's that blue, grippy floor I was talking about and uh, plenty of closet space that I'll show here. You'll find your life jackets in this closet. You do not need to bring them to the mustard drill, uh, at least on mine. Most of the time you don't have to. Make sure you pay attention to that. And there's the safe where you can put all your valuables. And the desk area does have a dryer, a hair dryer. I believe it's in the, the bottom drawer. Since this is an older ship, you just have that one outlet. You have the 220 and the 110, uh, but just one outlet to kind of plug in your, your phone or cameras or whatever else you have there. So keep that in mind. You might want to try to use the one in the bathroom if you can charge something up. Uh, nice little lights along the way here. There's two over the bed and there's one in the corner there if you want to read in that chair. Kind of a small TV in the corner. It's about the size of a computer monitor, I guess, but you're not going to be watching TV in the stateroom too often anyway on a cruise, right? So you have a little nightstand on this side of the bed as well. If someone is using the bunk bed, it might be kind of hard to navigate from this side of the bed over to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So you want to keep that in mind. But here's just an overview of what the room looks like. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of Carnival Imagination. If you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'll try to answer them in a timely manner if I can, if I know the answer. If you enjoy this kind of video, if you want to subscribe, um, feel free to go ahead and do so. I'm not going to twist your arm. Uh, just glad that we can put out these videos and inspire you guys to get out there and cruise, cruise the world. And uh, hope you get cruise fever like we have because I don't think it's going away. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.